Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, I am an artist and illustrator and an aspiring knitting designer coming to you from Dublin in Ireland. And today I'll come to you from a very very gloomy Dublin. Um, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and it's still pitch dark outside, there's a big storm coming. but. Weather forecasts apart, um, you can find me on uh, Instagram, Ravelry, on uh, Etsy, looking for Irish Farm Art or an Irish Knitting Podcast. If you are a new viewer, welcome! This really means a lot to me. This is episode 43 of what is my attempt to a knitting podcast and uh, I talk about Finnish works works in progress, acquisitions and anything literally that is happening into my crafty artistic world. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It's been a while and you will excuse my rustiness today, uh, but I haven't filmed in a long, long time. I'll come to that at the very end of the podcast. I'll give you a little bit of a life update and what's happening and why I haven't been filming for almost a month now. So let's start with the Finnish works. And the first one, I can't remember if I showed this on my previous podcast. This is the Painted Brick Socks from uh, Stephen West and I have made two. This is knitted in a combination of uh, Drops of Fable, which is uh, Drops of Sock Yarn 75-25 and of course Drops North, the green wool is Drop North. Drop North is a sock yarn, has a percentage of nylon, but as well as wool it has a small percentage of alpaca, which makes everything really nice and soft and lofty. Why did I choose uh, uh, to use an alpaca yarn in a pair of socks? Well, I was drawn to this pattern just because the pattern is quite beautiful and uh, I really didn't go on and buy a sock yarn and I don't have much sock yarn in my stash at the moment. So what I could find was half a bowl of this fable orange, pure sock yarn, and then another half bowl of uh, the green um, alpaca-ish yarn. And I, they were similar weight, I put them together and this was the result. I wanted just to try the pattern because everybody and their dogs on Instagram have knitted it and it looks quite stunning. So I carried on and I got a full pair of socks. For the socks I didn't really use the suggested needles, I used a 2mm for the cuff and 2.25 for the sock which is my favorite type of needles. And uh, for sock knitting I use DPNs. Um, Aya Haya DPNs or the Knit Pic, Knit Pro uh, DPNs, the colorful one. I really really like them. And um, yeah, it's my favorite size of needles because I feel like uh, I'm a very picky sock wearer. And I want my sock fabric to be tight and snuggly and uh, quite, uh, how can you say, tight, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, using 2 and 2.25 is the best way for me to get a tight fabric. 2.5 is too loose, 2.75 is too loose. Anyway, something else that I haven't uh, um, done as per the pattern prescribed is the heel and the toe. I just use my favorite recipe of heel. This is the heel that my uh, great grandmother taught me. Works every time and I know that it fits my socks uh, very well, my feet very well. So here we go. I am really pleased with the socks, although 
having knitted these socks in the summer they were looking a little bit like um, crocodile scales but now that we are getting into autumn and winter i really love or uh, learned to love the combination of uh, the orange and the green i think they are quite halloweenish uh, yeah it's a it's a gorgeous pattern very well written as per usual uh, stephen west's patterns are are great um yeah uh, i don't know if i'm gonna make more of these socks so when i knitted them i was absolutely in love with the pattern the socks the stretchiness of the fabric and everything and i was absolutely certain that this would be my favorite sock now uh I don't know, I got, uh, I grew a little bit bored about uh, socks. I have so many in my stash. I have distashed a lot of socks. I have given them away, gifted them, sent them to charities. And still I have a lot of socks and I tend to wear just gym socks, um, like a regular tennis, uh, how do you call them? regular socks <laughs> so I find myself not wearing hand knitted socks at all which is quite uh, interesting because I really enjoy uh, knitting them so yeah I'm trying to balance a little bit the surge of knitting socks and uh, um, the need for more socks but this is the first finished work I warmly warmly recommend it Going on with the works, uh, the finished works, I have da -da -da, a jumper. So I was telling you that I, uh, I've been facing during the summer, especially a little bit of a knitting block. I didn't have any inspiration. Uh, the uh, taking on my needles and start knitting gave me. <laughs> I don't know, a weird feeling. I didn't um, enjoy it very much anymore and it was kind of an odd period of my life. Now, I don't know if that was because it was summer or because I was fed up with the projects that I was working on. So this finished work that you probably can't tell is a very dark blue. It's basically from wool that I frogged from one of those projects that were lingering for month and month that I that put me in that very bad position of not enjoying my knitting anymore. And this especially was the Saven sweater. Now, I don't remember the name of the author, but it's a very, very famous um, cable, overall cable sweater knitted in pieces has hundreds of thousands of projects, everybody likes it. I found myself struggling a lot. First, because I think cable, cabling is not really my thing. I enjoy wearing cable sweater. I don't really enjoy knitting them as much. And especially if they are um, jumpers, big jumpers knitted in pieces. I know that uh, I can make them, but on the back of my mind, I have this thing that there were so many failing attempts of knitting sweaters in pieces that uh, there's always a little bit of fear that all the massive work of cabling is going to be thrown in the beam because I don't like the fit or I don't like uh, the final result. Anyway, um, apart from all my complaining, I had two sleeves and uh, the front, half of the front or three quarter of the front done, but one row of the front took me about, I don't know, 15 minutes, which uh, sounds like nothing, nothing but it's one row. <laughs> so think about how many rows you have to do to finish the entire thing. And I really, really love the yarn. This is a let lopi from Istex. And uh, yeah, I just 
unravel it and uh, I made this beautiful jumper in what a week. This is the Mr. Casual uh, sweater jumper by uh, Sun Scar. It's uh, a pattern that is in the 2015 men's book collection. I don't have the booklet with me right now to show you, but I make sure to link everything in the description or you can find it easily on the internet. It's um, a gorgeous collection of uh, uh, patterns for men. I warmly recommend. I made three or four uh, garments from that booklet and this was something that I missed. It's just a very simple, all over stocking it uh, jumper with uh, saddle shoulder pads. Absolutely, I don't think you can see the saddle, but basically how it works is knitted from the top and down. And on the top of the shoulder, there's a little five centimeter strip that goes down and connects to the shoulder. It is something that I always wanted to try and that the original Savin Savin sweater had the same feature. The way that Sunness Garn describes the saddle is very minimal, but once again really, really effective. I don't know what's uh, on with those uh, Norwegian patterns. They are so short and um, synthetized. They're very, very um, short. They use very few words, but they explain extraordinarily well how to construct a garment, how to knit, what to do at every single stage. Uh, it's my favorite way to uh, read a pattern for sure. So for this jumper I use 12 balls of uh, Istex uh, Letlopi, which is kind of an iron weight yarn. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that, uh, with Letlopi. It's uh, really popular. It's a really rough. It's Icelandic wool, uh, so it's actually very very rough and really itchy. So I'm going to wear this jumper um, on the top of a shirt, a long sleeve shirt or something like that, for sure. As I mentioned, it's uh, knitted from the top and down, then you put on hold the stitches of the sleeve and then you knit down the sleeves. The pattern tells you to make uh, a number of short rows at uh, the neck side, on the back. I did add uh, a few short rows as well on the back, uh, lower back side as well, because I kind of like my jumpers to be a little bit more covering on the back side. Nothing that you can tell. It's uh, literally a few centimeters on the bottom. Apart from that, uh, the pattern has been followed by the letter. It's uh, been a joy to need uh, just very mindful stocking at Bob's your uncle. The needles that I use here are uh, not what is recommended by the pattern or the yarn ball. This because A, I don't have all the numbers in the world and B, gauge was kind of an issue for me. If you know, if you follow this channel, I am not quite familiar with knitting um, with iron wool. I think my top tier uh, of thickness of wool is DK, as familiarity goes. So I don't own uh, many big size needles and the pattern calls for a 5.5 needle and I use a number less. I use a 4.5 for the body and a 3.5 for the ribbing. Gave me um, gauge-ish and I think it's because the yarn is so thick that even if you don't want you get gauge at some point. But uh, I ended up uh, choosing a size higher than my measurements because the gauge was a little bit tight. And being this a massive 
woolly jumper, very heavy and warm. I just wanted something comfortable. I did try this on um, as soon as I cast it off. Uh, um, fits well. The thing is that being the yarn, whole 100% frogged yarn, uh, it was all crinkly, if it makes any sense. Sorry for my English, by the way. I've been uh, just on a call with uh, my family in Italy and uh, changing from Italian to English is a nightmare. So it was all crinkly, so I suppose now that is washed and almost dry, the fibers uh, uh, kind of relax a little bit and it's gonna look uh, so much better and probably a little bit more um, oversized. I'm not putting this on because it's wet. <laughs> anyway, if you are interested, I will show you uh, the jumper, how it looks like in my next podcast and uh, yeah, but I'm super happy with this. And this jumper made me actually come back to the joy of knitting, being full stock in it, and as well being a very quick work. I'm used to knitting jumpers in uh, fingering weight yarn, and they take uh, quite a while, like a month or so, to knit a jumper. Uh, this took a week just because it's so big and squishy and I can't stop sniffing it. I used to wash it. Some wash uh, soap detergent that I found uh, at Tesco in my local grocery here. It's a... Uh, I don't remember the name actually. It's that pink um, bottle that you can find for 5 euro or something. I didn't have any eucalyptus uh, left, <laughs> anything like that, and uh, I was torn if I should order some, but I'm trying to save some money, and uh, if I go on to a wool shop to buy uh, eucalyptus, I probably will end up buying wool, which is not good if you're trying to save money. Um, yeah, I'm trying to save money because my computer is completely uh, gone. It's now with a technician that is trying to save it. It's extraordinarily old. It's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. But, you know, I'm using it to um, edit these videos mainly and nothing else because uh, work provides me with their own machine. So I don't really have... <clears throat> I don't really have the need for a brand new laptop, but it's dead, so yeah. And um, if I have to buy a new computer, that may take some uh, finance uh, um, attention, let's say. Second finish work done. Let's go on with the third, what am I? I have knitted so many things, and here we go <laughs> with the third finish work. This is a pair of slippers. I have to thank uh, once again um, Inga from the Knitting Tradition podcast because she just knitted a pair of slippers for her boyfriend, husband. Anyway, I uh, knitted um, slippers uh, last winter and I looked everywhere to find them and I can't find them anywhere. So it's uh, getting into slippers um, time and I really wanted uh, uh, those lovely slippers and that pattern was uh, the one that Inga used as well, um, the double knitted slippers by Sunness Garn. But then I remembered that I designed a slipper pattern so I was like, why am I not making my own? So as well, I can check if there's any modification that I can make. And I modify a little bit my pattern. So the base of this pattern is the iron slippers that you can find in my rubbery page. It's basically a slipper that is knitted using short row everywhere. The back, the front, the 
inside. <laughs> it's just a massive piece of short rows. They are very easy to make, by the way. And we have as well an insole um, in the pattern to need. My original design comes up, I'm trying to be mindful of the light, comes up with a lower edge over here. So it's probably uh, more like a slipper or a, how do you call them? Like kids call them now sliders. So your foot just a slight thing. This resembles a little bit the original idea of Sunness Garn um, double felted uh, slippers that Inga made. But I use the same concept of my pattern, the iron slippers, adding a number of short rows to raise on the top the um, back part of the slipper, the heel. Then I made an insole, I put them in the washing machine, I felt them. They would still need another wash because they are quite big. I am a 42-43 um, European size uh, foot size and I think this will need a little bit more yarn that I use. I use, of course, the remaining two balls and a half of uh, Istex Let Lopi in the gorgeous blue that I made the jumper with. Super happy with this, I don't know why I didn't make more of them before. I think slippers knitting is becoming my um, sock knitting <laughs> type of alternative and I'm super happy with those. I can't wait to let them fully dry and probably refelt them a little bit and uh, yeah so if you want to knit this pattern check out my ravelry page i might put like a post or an amendment to the pattern to get you the high back as well as the lower one Okay, I've spoken for 22 minutes already and I probably need a coffee break, but let's go on with the works in progress. I think coming from a point of uh, not being knitting at all to having three finished works plus a number of works in progress, it's... Uh, quite a good point to be and very very pleased with that so yeah happy days I think it's coming back somehow so let's start with something that you have seen before this is oh it's growing actually I can't fit the screen anymore this is a scarf that I am knitting without any pattern will probably become a pattern but it's probably so simple that it doesn't need to. This scarf is knitted in double knitting so it's uh, this technique that um, allows you to get two right sides on the same piece and is double the thickness as well. So you knit and purl on two colors on the same row, it's impossible to explain, I know, but check out any YouTube video around double knitting, it's uh, actually super interesting. I know that uh, the sock matician, if he's still doing videos, uh, used to be a pro in double knitting and it's probably the person that kind of introduced me on that. So this is a simple pattern with uh, polka dots um, I'm using some mustard yarn. This is uh, Studio Donigal yarn, uh, the thin one, which is called... Oh, it's escaping me now. Darni. It's called Studio Dolnigal Darni. It's a very uh, lovely Irish wool. And then some drops north. The yarn that I was talking about, uh, which is a combination of um, alpaca, uh, wool and nylon. 
and the two together being the Studio Donegal a little bit uh, on the rough side, on the rustic side and the alpaca yarn being very soft. It gives actually a gorgeous squishiness to this scarf. The only point is that it's uh, very long to knit. If I go back I would probably reduce the width of the scarf so it makes it a little bit faster to uh, to knit up. I probably need to do other three times this length here before it's ready. I'm sure this won't come for next month or uh, this winter probably at all. But perhaps if I manage to do at least one repetition of the pattern a day, I don't know, in a week I could do seven, which is about this size, so yeah, uh, I'm terrible with math, so it's gonna be ready. When it's gonna be ready? This is my new philosophy, I don't want to stress with knitting, this is an hobby and I want to enjoy every single moment of it, rather than stressing out with uh, publishing patterns or uh, showing on the internet, nothing like this anymore. So yeah, this is growing, oh needle size, I'm using a 3mm needle size, probably should have gone down a size because it's quite um, see-through, although it's double knitting. Um, I don't know, I really hope that washing it, especially the Studio Donegal, will plump up a little bit, but we'll see about that. Really, really enjoying the process though, which is the important piece. Do we have more works in progress? We do have more. So, here we go with the next one. Ta -ta -ta. This is uh, on a cone. Um, let's talk about the yarn first. I choose these two cones. This is an old says a loading on the label, I suppose is from JC Rennie. And this is uh, Holstgarn super soft wool in the color Ecru. Um, this is a lovely dark um, kind of military green that I absolutely love. It's been in my stash forever. And I always been quite scared of using it because I don't want to finish it. And I can't really afford uh, JC Rennie anymore. Uh, with the import taxes for the UK, it's just becoming not worth it. So the two together are looking stunning. Um, the white looks a bit bleached out with the light, but it's a kind of a warm, warm white. So these two yarns are similar, uh, super soft wool. It's a fingery weight wool. The cones are drenched in spinning oil. So when you knit up, um, I repeat this over and over in every podcast that I'm uh, showing you uh, this type of yarn. But when you knit this up, it's uh, going to look very see-through, very transparent as a fabric, and it may leave some residue of oil on your hands. But once you wash it a couple of times, the fabric puff up like magic, becomes a really nice, lofty and uh, big and chunky and, uh, well, all the magic. You need to try it if you haven't tried it. I'm not sponsored, although I wish I was sponsored by uh, Holstgarn or JC Rennie. It's the most beautiful yarn. And for sure, I came to think and to realize that is my favorite yarn to knit with. So, after this um, Pindaric flight, I don't know if you say this in English, uh, on the yarn, what am I knitting with it? I have basically just started a project. This is a piece of ribbing, tiny bit of color work, and then I am going up with the body. I am using for this sweater a combination of uh, 2.5 millimeters needle for the ribbing and 2.75 for uh, the body and the color work. As you can see, the um, 
yarns together look absolutely fantastic and I'm looking at the viewfinder of the camera to see what I'm showing you. Anyway, what is this? So, I'm talking about paper because I'm not showing you the actual drawing, although I could, because, I mean, I did it. Um, yeah, this is, I'm just flashing it on the screen just to show you what I've done. I was looking for a jumper with reindeers, like a nice Christmas jumper with um, reindeers on the yoke. And I couldn't find any. I mean, there are plenty there, but nothing that I really liked that grabbed my eyes. So, looking around Ravelry, I could find a pattern from Dale. And Dale Garn, um, or Dale, no idea, it's a Norwegian uh, yarn brand. And the pattern, if you see on the internet, is called number 20706. I'm going to link it below. The point is that uh, this gorgeous sweater uh, for men with their reindeers <laughs> was published in a booklet a few years ago and I couldn't get a hold of the PDF pattern or indeed the booklet itself. So there are only 11 projects, uh, com include mine, on the Ravelry of this sweater and uh, what I've done was going on the pattern and on the photos and just <laughs> draw down the actual situation, the actual um, color work. Now, because I am um, obsessed with uh, knitting with uh, um, super soft wool, and uh, I really wanted a color work jumper knitting on those yarns, I took a pattern as a template that I really know works for me. And I took the Marius number 15 sweater. I can put it there now. Uh, the Marius number 15 is a pattern from Sunness, is for sale, so I can't really talk about that, but I know that uh, um, the first size of the pattern is the one that works for me if I need with that yarn with those uh, needle sizes. So I did some calculations, some magic, and I um, made the color work to match the number of the pattern by Sunness. So it's a similar style of the original, it works quite. Uh, uh, well um, together and uh, yeah I'm just doing that it's basically a Frankenstein type of work with a little bit of invention when I couldn't get the actual color work but I think I am 98% there with the color work it's just that some of the photos um, are so old that I couldn't really figure out the stitch count um, is not um, Dallas pattern, is not Sunless Garn pattern, but is a combination of the two. And uh, if everything goes well together, this will be a gorgeous, gorgeous Christmas style jumper. The thing is that the Dalle Garn pattern, the original one, is knitted in iron way yarn, or at least um, so, Ravelry says. And I'm knitting finger away yarn. No problem at all, the pattern fits number-wise. <coughs> the only thing is that the uh, color work is gonna be smaller. So I'm thinking of adding um, a few repetition of the color work rather than just the band like it is on the pattern itself. We'll see when I get there. For now, it's very slowly growing, very, very slowly. I think that was it. I have one more work in progress that I didn't know if I wanted to show you because it's kind of out of my comfort zone or my language as well. It's a crochet project, which is here. So, this is a lace 
projects. I don't know if you can tell. It's, um, I, I say I don't have the language because I don't know the terminology of crochet in English. So how does this come about? I stole from my mother this um, magazine here, which is full of a little crochet pattern. This is called Filet Uncinetto, Nuovi Lavori Artistici. It's from 1985, it's older than me. And uh, on this booklet there is a um, work that my great-grandmother made herself. I can't show you because I don't want to get a copyright strike or anything like that and there's no picture of that. Anyway, this work here, uh, my great-grandmother made it um, for herself, is a bust of a Virgin Mary and um, when she passed away for, you know, family sort of reason, um, that uh, was framed in a big uh, frame, very nice, and was um, given to uh, one of my aunts. Uh, my mom always wanted to make it and uh, she uh, started it, I think, a million times and she never managed to. Because my mom is very impatient, I suppose, <laughs> and uh, I uh, kind of had this booklet, this um, magazine, here in Ireland with me. I was just looking through to see if I could find inspiration for color work and stuff like that. And I saw that piece uh, was one of the patterns. So I armed myself with a uh, hook. This is number... 1.5 and this is from Rico Design and yarn which is also from Rico Design this is a cotton yarn uh, there's no label unfortunately this came like this and uh, yeah it's basically a combination of uh, chain and uh, double crochet don't quote me on that it makes a, basically a nice little uh, web and uh, the concept is the same as color work. You fill in with double crochet uh, spaces and you leave spaces white. Now it doesn't look much uh, as it is now all crumpled up but uh, when it's stretched and uh, starched is going to bloom and look beautifully and you can recognize the, the picture. My idea is to finish it for kind of Christmas time and uh, gift it to my mom because I know that she really wanted to keep it and um, yeah, as it happens, she didn't. So that may be a nice present, I thought, and as well a skill that I am learning, a new skill. It's really mindful and simple to do. It's just a matter of putting uh, some time in. That's it for um, now. Um, I do have an acquisition, which is this one. I really hope by the light you can see this gorgeous yarn. This is from the Wee Yarn Company. I've heard about this uh, hand-dyed yarn company so many times and uh, I finally ended up buying myself some of this yarn. This is, uh, let me uh, tell you, the color is Deep Forest. I'm going to link the website below. And it's uh, BFL Ronnie Socks, 100% SWBFL. 100 grams by 400 meters. I bought this one skein um, a couple of weeks ago because I um, was struck by the color and I was waiting for uh, this to come to see how it looks like, how it is and see if I want to invest more money to buy myself a jumper quantity of this yarn. Now, um, 
I love it, unfortunately. <laughs> and a skein is about 30 euro, considering shipping and all. And I really want a jumper quantity of this, but I probably would need three, four skein, something like that, which is a lot of money for yarn buying at this point in time. So I don't know what to do. Should I, should I not, should I invest? It's a gorgeous green color and as you see, I do like my green and I'm wearing green as well, so I don't know what to do. Um, I could use this for sure to make uh, a teeny tiny scarfy thing, a pair of gloves, a pair of socks, of course, or an accent for a wider color work. That may actually be an idea. If I need a light jumper, maybe this crew color, and I do the other way around, this could be actually coming together quite nicely. At the end of the day, it's fingering weight yarn and should work. Anyway, thinking out loud here. What else? That's it. We are finished. We are finished with 40 minutes of recording. So, let me get closer to you, dim a little bit the lights and make it... Here we go. Oh, that's lovely. So, um, if you are here for the knitting, thank you so much for uh, coming by. That really uh, was a lot of fun for me to record and I really hope it was for you to follow along and uh, I'll see you at the next podcast. If you want to have a chat with me now, here we go. We are going to be very, very intimate <laughs> and uh, open. So, what happened? Why haven't I been filming for so long? And uh, why didn't I have... Uh, uh, where did my uh, knitting mojo go in all this time? So, all started in the middle of the summer and I found myself um, bordered with a lot of things that I explained uh, in my previous podcast at length. Now, let me give you a brief uh, overview of my burdens. <laughs> so, work, first of all. Of course, uh, one needs to work and uh, one needs a full-time job if he wants to pay the mortgage and the bills and afford some sort of uh, life. And work has, becoming, has become uh, so much more demanding uh, lately, uh, you know, it's, it's work. The second piece is my other artistic endeavor, uh, which is painting. I have been um, painting for the past 10 years or so. Um, I say professionally, but it's not professionally. I've been painting and selling uh, paintings on Etsy. <laughs> And um, that um, slump a bit, meaning I uh, lost a lot of uh, followers on Instagram. Uh, I know this will come back and this may sound extraordinarily stupid as well. If Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo um, had to worry about followers on Instagram, they wouldn't have painted the Gioconda or anything else. But we are in a different age, and both Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo had to pay bills with their stuff. And uh, for us, part of the having to pay bills is... Um, as well having followers on Instagram and here on YouTube because they kind of uh, uh, see what you're painting and eventually uh, the 0.01% of those will end up buying an artwork from you. So justifying this. Anyway, I started losing followers. I started uh, seeing that all my efforts weren't really meeting any um, feedback. And uh, what did I do? 
Um, by the way, this happened not just in uh, the artistic life, but in the knitting as well. Uh, started knitting, um, started um, plumbing in my sales of patterns, uh, um, followers here on YouTube. Uh, so everything started just to close down on my effort. So instead of stepping back and uh, coldly analyzing what was going on and why uh, probably it was on me that I wasn't able to uh, reach my own expectation in terms of uh, feedback, in terms of uh, growing my channels, in terms of uh, sales. I put all of this pressure of my uh, artistic work, my crafty work, and I started to painting almost a paint a week, a painting a week, or a watercolor a day. You've seen um, dozens of um, little uh, shorts or kind of uh, short videos uh, of me doing watercolors in a kind of a rush of uh, producing more and more and more, and with the knitting as well was the same thing, uh, kind of a rush of knitting more and more and more and more and showing more on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, here on YouTube. I reach a point in which um, nothing has changed. I was producing this vast amount of art and the craft, but the feedback didn't come and uh, I got a little bit into a burnout type of situation. I couldn't um, understand, and I still can't, why the system doesn't help. And uh, I couldn't understand, and I still can't, understand what to do to get better at uh, beating the system if it does make any sense. The system being probably the algorithm. I thought that feeding more and more to the algorithm would solve this issue, but um, that probably solved for a tiny little bit, but then it got back a square one when the algorithm understood that I was feeding it more and wanted even more. Anyway, burned out completely. I couldn't lift a brush, I couldn't lift a needle by the life of me. So I stopped everything at once. Um, I was very lucky that I had a couple of weeks of holidays. I went on holidays, I visited a beautiful Portugal. Uh, I've been there many years ago and uh, I kind of rediscover all of uh, the stunning city, food and everything that was going on in Portugal. Anyway, that is for another chat. I didn't share much there. I decided to give myself a few days off uh, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, all social medias. And uh, that really helped very much on my side to feel better and not having this massive pressure all the time on my neck to produce, to do, to get uh, followers, to sell. Didn't help my finances, of course, but uh, for sure helped my personal well-being, uh, my mood and my will to make art and make uh, uh, and craft. So, as much as that uh, I actually um, found myself giving me days of social media on a weekly basis. Like, for example, this week I'm recording on a Wednesday and I did Sunday and Monday without social media. And that is extraordinarily refreshing. I find myself taking up my phone and uh, clicking on social media. And when I realize that I'm clicking on the Instagram icon or whatever, I get out immediately. At the beginning, it was quite difficult because, you know, you don't know what to do. You're sitting on the couch uh, uh, watching television and you just scroll down. I understood that uh, uh, getting rid of this habit is like quitting smoking, <laughs> if it makes any sense but allows you to focus on 
everything else that is going on. Enjoying a movie, um, reading a book. I have been reading so many books in this couple of months in which I try to um, stay away from social media that you can't even imagine. So I think this is probably the way uh, to go for me right now. Detach myself a little bit from the uh, demanding algorithm, the upload schedule on YouTube, Instagram, whatever, and uh, just create if I want to for my own pleasure and for your pleasure as well because when I step back I get to enjoy much more and if I enjoy I can share everything with much more joy. I say that um, this is probably my problem because I had in my mind the goal of uh, eventually when I am 50 quitting everything and just make art and craft as my uh, full-time job so with the urge to get there I kind of felt um, I should put much more energy than I was doing in that field but I don't know I probably am not talented or <laughs> I don't know, I should just step back and I think this is helping very, very much. On the flip side, knitting specifically, I think I ended up knitting stuff because they were on social media. Other podcasters were knitting their beautiful southern sweater or other um, very intricate jumpers, which are not my style and I attempted them because I really wanted feedback. I was craving this feedback, but they were not what I enjoy doing. Why am I doing that? So another rule that I impose to myself in order to get better and more mindful is to need only what I enjoy. For example, this reindeer uh, jumper now is something that I really wanted for a long time and uh, having to do some research to draft the pattern and so on and so forth is giving me uh, all of that joy that, I don't know, I was probably missing from knitting a pattern that is extraordinarily popular that everybody is knitting. I really hope this makes sense. I know that I have been speaking for a long, long time, so it's probably time to say goodbye. Um, I really hope you enjoy this video and if you, by any chance, have been through similar uh, situation, do you have any more recommendation for me, for the community? And uh, yeah, please share and don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, whatever, <laughs> just we need to beat this algorithm. I will see you with the next video. I'm not giving you a time frame for the next video. Could be next week, could be in a month's time. For now, I think um, leaving this space open will help both of us. <laughs> so we'll see when we'll see each other. Uh, if you need anything, please reach out. I'll be really happy to talk. Bye-bye.